Good afternoon. My name is Jim Madison, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Scout Executive CEO for the Winnebago Council Boy Scouts of America. We hope you've all been enjoying our virtual programming that is being produced and published by the Council Executive staff, as well as a dedicated group of volunteers. Growing up, I was lucky enough to have a father who could literally fix anything. He spent a tremendous amount of time teaching me as much about car care and fixing other stuff as he could. For many, automotive maintenance can be a bit scary, but with a little bit of research and know-how, anyone can become a shade tree mechanic. In honor of my father who taught me everything I know about automotive maintenance, I'd like to welcome you to Bass Daddy's Garage, where we will be working on my personal 2014 GMC Sierra and learning how easy and simple it is to do a little bit of vehicle maintenance, including an oil change. The first item I always go to for anything about my vehicle is my owner's manual. Within every owner's manual, you will find a multitude of information on your specific make and model of vehicle. Since we're doing an oil change today, I went to the technical data pages to look up the capacity and specifications for my 2014 GMC Sierra. We have here all of the items necessary to do a simple oil change. On Let's go through the list of items. We have a socket wrench, a 15 millimeter socket, a funnel, a collection device to collect our old oil, a 76 millimeter filter wrench, a new oil filter, a rag, and of course, new oil. Before we begin our oil change, we need to look underneath the hood and find a couple key items that are going to be important as we start to refill the system after evacuating the oil. First thing you want to locate under your hood is the oil dipstick. The oil dipstick is how you check your oil level in your vehicle for day-to-day -day maintenance. We also want to find and locate the oil cap where we will be adding the new oil when we get to that point and I also want to point out the fact that most newer cars print right on the oil cap what weight oil that vehicle requires in this case you can see that my truck requires Dexos approved OT20 weight oil in this case OT20 weight oil is a 100% synthetic oil. Now that we've identified the parts and places above or in the engine compartment that we need to have access to, let's get down underneath the vehicle and get that old oil out. All right, let's get going underneath the vehicle and get the old oil out. The first thing we need to do is to identify the location of the oil filter as well as the oil drain plug. On my truck, I'm lucky that my oil filter and my oil drain plug are right next to each other. All we have to do is use our 15 millimeter socket to remove this nut and the oil will be drained. Prior to doing that, you want to ensure that you have your oil drain pan underneath your vehicle to catch the old oil. All right, let's get started and get that oil plug out so we can start draining our oil. It's important to remember when loosening and tightening bolts, the old term, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Once we get the, the nut loose, we don't have to have the socket anymore. We can simply loosen it by hand. We're gonna put our catchment system underneath. And as we unscrew this nut, we want to make sure to press into it so the oil doesn't gush out all at once until we're ready for it to happen. Make sure to not drop this bolt in your oil, otherwise you're going to get your hands really greasy trying to fish it out. And here we go. Now it's going to take a couple minutes to drain the eight and a half quarts of oil that my truck requires out of the engine crankcase. 
So we're gonna let this drain out and we'll be right back. All right, we've taken a few minutes and there's just a little bit of drip of an oil coming out of the engine at this point. While that oil was draining, I took the opportunity to take my towel and wipe off the nut and I inspected the little rubber seal that's on the inside of my nut. Occasionally this rubber seal will get damaged or over time it will wear out and you're gonna to wanna to replace that rubber seal with a new one so that when you reinstall it, you do not have an oil leak. In this case, I've inspected it. It's still in good working order, so we're just going to reuse it. We're gonna take our towel. We're gonna to wipe around that surface to make sure we have all of the dirt off and all of the extra oil. We're gonna reinstall our oil plug by hand. If you ever feel any resistance when replacing your oil plug, back it out and start again. Most likely you may have cross threaded your bolt and you definitely do not wanna cross thread your bolt. Now we're gonna come back in a minute and we're gonna tighten this down, but next we need to get the oil filter out so that we can prepare to install the new oil filter. In an ideal world, this oil filter would be able to be removed with just the strength of my hand, but it makes it much easier to have filter wrench. This happens to be a 74 to 76 millimeter filter wrench that fits right on the end. And then we can use our ratchet wrench to loosen that right up. So that's what we're gonna do now. Now you wanna take your oil filter off slow because this oil filter, since it's held vertically, will be completely full of oil. Once you get start getting it loose, you can take your oil filter wrench off of it and just use your hand. We wanna reposition our oil containment system below so that the oil that comes out can be captured. Oil filters that are installed vertically can be a little messy, but that's part of the fun. Now, for the time being, we're gonna put the old oil filter into the oil containment system, and we're gonna let this drain out of the engine just for one moment. While we do that, you can see here, we did have a little bit of oil drippage on the frame rail. You wanna go ahead and wipe that off just to make it clean so you're not dripping oil all over the road after you finish your service. While that's finishing to drip out a little bit, we're gonna take a moment, put our 15 millimeter socket back on, and we're gonna tighten down this bolt. It doesn't have to be super tight, it just has to be tight enough. I've done this enough that I can know by feel how tight to tighten it. As you tighten that bolt, you're collapsing that rubber grommet on the inside, sealing, creating a leak-free environment. There we go, and that's all we need. Next, we're gonna install the new oil filter. All right, now we're ready to install the new oil filter. It's important to know on the top of an oil filter, there's a small rubber gasket that seals to the bottom of the engine that also prevents leaks. To help prevent leaks in a better seal, I've taken a little bit of fresh oil and I've lubricated the top of that gasket. Before we go to putting that new oil filter in, it's important to take your rag and wipe around the oil filter housing, cleaning of any debris, and breaking loose any old seal that might have stuck. So let's take a look at that. All right, here we go. I hope everybody can see this, but right here is where the oil filter screws in, and we want to ensure that this whole mating surface is clean and free of debris. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And there we go, all cleaned up and ready to install the new oil filter. Use our hand and thread it on. It's important to, to know that when installing an oil filter, you never want to use your oil filter wrench to help install the oil filter. That's gonna provide way too much torque for the sensitive um, and very thin walled oil filter. 
you just want to start that oil filter by hand and as you turn it it will go on and you want to watch the seal just makes contact with the engine with our hand we want to do one more rotation of the oil filter to set your seal you're just looking for it to be hand tight and there we go we have the new oil filter installed we have the old oil evacuated from the system our oil plug reinstalled and tightened to the correct setting now it's time to get all of our tools out from underneath the vehicle and finish off this oil change by adding and checking the new oil level all right we're out from underneath the vehicle and we're now we're ready to add fresh oil to the engine for this we have removed the oil fill plug we're going to take our funnel and we're going to stick it down in the oil fill hole just like so and we're going to start adding the proper amount of oil required for my engine as i mentioned earlier my 5.3 liter v8 takes eight and a half quarts of oil this can be kind of a slow process so we'll just speed things up all right we're going to stop right there for now likely i'll have to add a little bit more but i'd rather have to add some more later than try to take oil out so i'm going to pull out my funnel and set it to the side now we're going to focus on the dipstick so let's go ahead and pull this dipstick out and using our rag we're going to wipe it off now we want to look at the very end of the dipstick on the end here you're going to see a set of hatch marks that are hard to see on the video but there's two dimples you want to fill your oil to the second dimple up so we're going to stick our dipstick back in the dipstick hole we're going to pull it out we're going to see what level our oil is at right now right now i don't know if you can see that where the level of the oil is it is right at that second dot what i'm going to do now that i know there's a good amount of oil and the oil's on the dipstick i'm going to reinsert the dipstick as well as put my oil cap fill cap back on just for a minute and i'm going to start my vehicle so that the oil can circulate throughout the engine then we're going to come back check the oil again see if we need to add any oil I've run my engine for about five to seven seconds to let the new oil circulate throughout the engine. Now we're going to pull that dipstick, check the level again, make sure we still have the proper amount of oil inside the engine. So I need to add about a half a quart more oil to our system. That's it. Our oil change is complete. My GMC Sierra is ready to go. Until next time, thanks for watching.